Oh, I just went to Harbor Freight and I found these magnets. They have a uh, base on. They have a little piece of plastic on them. I guess so you don't scratch your appliance or whatever. I won't be using that, so I took it off and looked at the bottom, and there's a space for a nut in there. But the unique thing about these is they come with a threaded hook already in a nut. So this is a nut inside here. Anyway, my macro is not working again. Nonetheless, I will have to accommodate the extended shoulder on top there. Let me turn some lights on and see if I can get this to work better. Alright, so that's a little better macro. Like I was saying, I will have to accommodate the shoulder now within the body of the stove, which means my washer will have to sit up a bit higher inside the stove base. But that's easy enough by just placing a few extra washers in there when I weld it together. <coughs> this way, I don't have to buy any more of the nuts. I just have to find either this thread type or option B would be just take this piece and cut it off say just above threads and put a 90 degree bend in this and then just weld that 90 degree bend into the base of the aluminum stove. Just thought. Anyways, so that was, oh, the reason I bought these, this four pack, hold on, I'll get out of the macro here. This uh, four pack that I purchased was only $2.79 for the pack and that is item number 98 502 four piece magnetic hook set from Harbor Freight for only two dollars and seventy nine cents. That brings my cost of my magnets down to sixty cents versus two dollars a piece. Oh. Yeah. yeah, so much for the threaded shoulder idea. That thing just popped right out of there with no chances at all. It said it would hold nine pounds, but man, I don't know. I guess nine pounds really isn't that much. I threaded it down in there and tried to give this a little bend and poop popped right out. So anyways, that's okay because that's what we're looking for anyway. We'll just use our nuts and uh, bolts and uh, you can see it isn't that much different than what we had before. So might be a little smaller. I don't know. Let's measure them together here. What do you think? Can't tell which one's which, can you? Neither can I. They look identical. Ow! Okay, yeah, they're identical. But don't ever get your finger between two strong magnets. One's got a rough edge on it, one's got a shiny edge. But for 60 cents, I mean 70 cents versus uh, two dollars, I'll take the shiny edge and say goodbye to it. So that's a deal. Easy to pop that piece out of there too, so that's great. Alright, I'm gearing up <clears throat> for my next batch of magnetic base stoves. Um, I'm a little short on a couple things. I've placed some orders. I got seven bottles. These three are some things I'm going to try. Uh, they're just some beaker type bottles. I'm not sure if they'll work. We'll see. These are the same kind of bottles I've been using. Uh, I'm I only have five nipples left. I put an order in for 20 more because you need uh, two for each stove. One for the bottle and one for the um, stove itself. So I put an order in for 20 more. I've got seven of my reducer washers. Two large, one medium, four small. Um, I've got seven of my washer and bolt and nuts all ready to go. I've got a whole new thing of Aluma Weld rods ready to go. 
Got all my tools out here that I will need. My drill bit. All my tools are over here, ready to go. Files. Hacksaw. Phillips. My straight head that I moved the uh, luma weld around with. I'm going to go ahead and put that drill bit in there before I lose it. Uh, sandpaper. Screwdriver for tightening down the nut at the end. I've got the pipe cutter here. I've got enough to do about 20 more with this pipe. Measured it out. I can get about 20 more of these out of that pipe. Uh, and I have about a 4 foot section. Eh, maybe 3 foot section left. It's only an inch. So if it's 3 foot, I can get 36 out of it, you know. So what else? I got my little protector for my threads here. Little gasket. I got my lock down. I got my spacer washer there. Actually, it's an additional spacer washer. I have that That's the one I've been using for my spacer washer. I've uh, got the extra O-rings here. I just don't have seven of these. I got seven O-rings, but I don't have seven nipples. <coughs> uh, that's everything over here. And then up here, we just went through this. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the magnets that I can use for the bases. Those turned out to be a great deal, the recent ones that I just found there. So I'll show you that if I haven't already. And I've got a couple just sitting around still up here. I've got this one, and I've got these two over here. That one needs a donut on. I stole it for something else. And that's just a magnet I was thinking about taking off of there, but I haven't decided if I'm going to do that yet. And I've got one more bottle just floating around here. This one leaks, so that's how come I haven't used it for anything. It's got a leak. I'm not sure if I can ever repair it because the cat's a little leaky. So, anyways, all ready to go for my next seven magnetic base alcohol stoves. What I'm thinking about, this is what I just finished, that we were showing in the last video. What I'm thinking about is, do I want to build something like this for each one of them? This is a uh, remote feed. Uh, it's named by a couple different things by different people. I think uh, Smoke Eater 908 calls it a fire plug. And um, Tenny at Mini Build Design calls them remote feed, although I think his might be made a little different. They're probably also, I think, metal, or they were at one time. Um, this one is made for a soda cap. Uh, I also have one that's made for these caps. The problem with doing these uh, is that you have to have a cap to destroy, hence put a hole in and leave glued in here, and another cap for the bottle. I built this one, well, I, I went to the store and bought this one and built this to match it. Uh, that was uh, off of um, Hiram Cook. has a great video that he was giving away some of these bubblers, and I entered his contest in hopes that I'd get a bubbler. I wasn't really looking for the uh, stove. Got enough stoves laying around and cooking kits. What I really wanted was one of these bubblers. And I was kind of sad that I didn't win one of the bubblers. But then I was going through uh, my local big lots, and wouldn't you know it, there was a Spider-Man punch soda. Soda? Punch? Whatever. Anyways, cut the label off, got myself a bubbler. So Hiram, not so jealous anymore. I've got one myself. So I built that. Uh, I did notice these things are kind of wobbly. So be careful with them if you do have, especially when they're lopsided like this, you know, on top of that bubbler. Kind of dangerous feeling a little bit, but just be careful if you decide to build one of those. This is your standard um, 90 degrees off with the thing here in the flat bottom. I did have a little problem where I got it too close to the stove. It rolled up next to the stove and I burnt mine. So, yeah, can be careful. Can be dangerous, I mean. So be careful. Anyways, good to go. I still have not JB welded this one. It's still, uh, actually, it's still wet from my test burn to make sure it didn't leak anywhere. It wasn't leaking uh, the whole time, so the JB weld is just an additional. After you pound that on from the bottom like we did, uh, it's pretty tight, and you, you uh, press out that uh, outer wall like we were doing, it gets pretty tight, but the JB weld is just for long term because you, you have a steel top and an aluminum bottom, and as the temperature of those two metals change, they will expand and contract at different uh, temperatures. So that's why I put the JB weld in there to try and keep them from having a crack between the two of them. So anyways, got my next seven stoves ready to go. And you're probably saying, why do you make seven stoves of the same kind? You can't use seven stoves at once. Well, now I can't. You're right. And I'm not selling them, so that's not what I'm doing with them. What I do is I, uh, I'm part of Hammock Farms, and I've been 
giving them away as uh, pay it forward is thing, something they do on the hammock forums. If you go on there and you've been a member for a while and you've had a couple posts and there's a couple rules you got to read up on it. If you go on there, there's a thread called pay it forward, and you can go on there and claim something that somebody else has given away. The only rule is then you have to post something to give away. So I am going to make a bunch of these and start giving them away as I claim prize or claim things on there. Uh, you know, I'm new to hammocking. I've done it for a year, maybe less. And there's a lot of things that I enjoy about it, but I don't have the equipment for it. So the whoopee slings, I claimed some of those the other day. Put up a, actually, I put up some down, down booties for those that were uh, female down booties that I bought and didn't know they were female down booties. And then uh, I claimed some, a second set of whoopee strings and a, a ridge line. Well, that time I put up a stove. So... Everybody seemed to jump on the stove, thought it was a great idea. Maybe not a gram weenie stove, but definitely a fun stove. So I'm going to build a bunch more, maybe claim a few more things, finish out my hammock gear, some of the little stuff that I don't have that I need. So anyways, and I'm going to make another kit for my uh, son. This is my current kit here. It's gotten a little heavy. I keep adding more stuff to it. So it's uh, almost two pounds now. need to kick that back and knock some of that out of there. Uh, it's, it can do anything though. It's got a baking, frying, cooking, uh, multiple alcohol tubes in the side here. Uh, one of these um, remote feeds down in the bottom down here. Uh, it's got everything you can imagine, but two pounds may be a little bit much. That includes the fuel, uh, two full bottles of this fuel, so that's part of the two pounds. But it's got a little big and a little heavy, so I may need to knock it down for uh, at least backpacking, maybe not car camping. So, you know, I'm making bunch more stoves over here and stuff and I've got got my sewing machine out or thread injector out excuse me getting ready to make some uh, more of these uh, this is off of uh, some material that I have I'm gonna make some stuff sacks and just experimenting so just want to show everybody what I've got there going on catch you guys in the next video and I'm back to making videos I, I hadn't mentioned this before but my camera was uh, not functioning well so I've got another camera and it is uh, not new but it is taking videos, so I can start making videos again. So now it's time to come up with some new ideas for the alcohol stoves now that I'm back to it. I'll talk to you guys later.